All right, here in section 2.7, we're gonna have a short lesson on how to solve equations and specifically talking about rational equations as we move into discussing rational functions. And so a rational equation is just an equation that includes rational expressions. And so a rational expression is just a fraction that has a variable in the denominator. And we are going to have to pay careful attention to any time we might have what's called an extraneous solution, which is basically any solution that is not a solution of the original equation. And so how we're going to check for extraneous solutions is simply by plugging back into the original uh, to see if it works. Or even simpler, really what we're going to do is at the beginning of each problem, we're going to check for domain restrictions and if one of the answers that we get turns out to be one of our domain restrictions, that's going to indicate that that answer is extraneous. And I'll explain more and we'll see examples of extraneous solutions as we work examples. Okay, here in example one, I see that this is a rational equation because of this term on the right hand side that has the variable in the denominator. And I know that denominators with variables cannot equal to zero and that whenever they do, I have what's called a domain restriction. And so the domain restriction on this particular equation is that the denominator of that term X cannot equal to zero. And so what that means is that if when I solve this equation, I get an answer of zero if that happens, that answer is extraneous. And so just pay attention to when we um, finish the problem and we'll make sure that our answers uh, do not include zero. Now, what am I gonna do to get rid of that denominator? I'm gonna multiply by it and I gotta multiply the entire equation by it. And so I'm gonna multiply everything by X. And so X times X is going to give me X squared. Five times X is going to give me plus five X and that's going to equal to 14 divided by x multiplied by x, and that means the x's are just going to cancel and give me 14. Now, this is just a quadratic equation at this point, so I'm gonna set it equal to zero by moving the 14 to the left-hand side and making it negative, and then I'm going to factor if possible, uh, and if not possible, then I'll have to use quadratic formulas. So factors of negative 14 that will add to positive 5 so i want them to multiply to negative 14 and add to positive 5 that would be some version of 7 and 2 and if i want them to add to a positive 5 that means that my larger number uh, 7 needs to be positive sorry about that let me erase that negative in front of the 7 that's not uh, correct the negative needs to go there in front of the 2 there uh, that way they will add to 5. okay so because the lead coefficient here is a one, that means I can shortcut the factoring work here and just write this as x plus seven and x minus two, which is gonna give me the two solutions, positive two and negative seven. Now, just a quick look back at my domain restriction. Back up here, we said that x could not equal to zero. Notice that neither of my answers is zero and therefore both of these answers will be acceptable. Whether they're correct depends on whether we did the question, uh, did the solving correct or not. And remember that you can always check that just by plugging your answers back into the original equation and making sure that you get a true statement. All right, here in example two, we've got a lot of denominators going on. And the first thing that I notice is that one of them is not factored. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get that factored um, so that it's easy to see what the domain restrictions are and what I need to multiply by in order to get rid of the denominator. And so what are my factors of negative 10 that will add to positive three? Well, that will be X plus five and X minus two. So I'm basically gonna just cross that out and put X plus five and X minus two instead and so now i'm ready to identify my domain restrictions and so looking at my denominators if i have x plus five that means x cannot equal to negative five and if i have x minus two that means x cannot equal to 
positive 2. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're ready to multiply this entire equation by both of these denominators, x plus 5 and x minus 2. And so when I multiply this first fraction by x plus 5, the x plus 5, uh, by x plus 5 and x minus 2, x plus 5 and x plus 5 are going to cancel. What that's going to leave me with is 3x multiplied by the, uh, the denominator that didn't cancel out. And so this is going to say 3x times x minus 2. Now, going to the next fraction, this 1 over x minus 2, when I multiply by x minus 2, that's going to cancel, and I'm going to be left with 1 uh, multiplied by x plus 5. And that's going to equal to the right-hand side, which on the right-hand side, both of my denominators are going to cancel since they're both down here, and I'm multiplying by both of them. So the right-hand side is just going to reduce down to 7. Now, from here, I'm going to distribute, and that's going to give me 3x squared minus 6x plus 1x plus 5. I'm going to go ahead in the same step, if that's okay with you, and subtract the 7 to the other side, and then collect my like terms. So I've got 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, this is a little bit of a more challenging factoring problem. In this problem, we have a lead coefficient of 3, and so my multiply number is going to be 3 times negative 2, which is going to give me negative 6. And my add number, as always, is that middle uh, coefficient, which is negative 5. And so my two numbers that will multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5 are going to be some version of 6 and 1, and I need the bigger number to be negative so that they will add to a negative. So I'm going to put those coefficients in front of x's here in the middle, minus 6x plus 1x minus 2. Group the first two terms together. What can be factored out from that? Hopefully you set a 3x, and that's going to leave us with x minus 2. And from the next two terms, we can factor out just a 1, and so that's going to leave us with x minus 2 as well. And so therefore, what are we going to get here? 3x plus 1 and x minus 2 is equal to 0. And therefore, I get two answers. x is equal to negative 1 -third from the first factor and 2 from the second factor. But be very careful. Notice, back up at the top of the problem, we identified 2 as a domain restriction. So in red, I'm just going to draw a line that connects that so it's clear for you. And so what that means about the answer x equals 2 is that x equals 2 is extraneous, and so therefore x is equal to negative one-third is the only true solution to this equation. But really what I should say is that it's an acceptable answer. You don't know that it's the actual correct answer until you go back and plug it in and make sure that it uh, actually works. But I feel pretty confident in my solving abilities. I feel like negative one-third is correct, and so that's the answer, and 2 is an extraneous solution.